Welcome in to Outkick the Show, boys and girls. I am your fearless leader, Clay Travis. I hope all of you are having fantastic Wednesdays, wherever across the country you may be. Your boy's headed down to the beach tomorrow, so not sure I'll be able to do a show on Thursday. Also, going to be at the beach on Friday, taking off from radio, taking off from TV. So, I gotta say... Everything is not perfect in my world. I just checked the weather down at the beach. It's going to be 92 degrees. Pray for your boy. It hasn't even been that hot in Nashville so far. And it's finally going to be 92 degrees. I'd like to welcome in Jamel Hill. Huge OutKick fan even though she blocked me on Twitter. Biggest celebrity that I saw checking out the show yesterday. Knew she was a big time closet fan. I don't check out the show every day uh, to see who's watching. But this morning, during a commercial break, I swung by and I was like, I wonder who watched yesterday. And my good friend Jamel Hill swung by, wanted to make sure that she didn't miss the show. I want to make sure, since she's a huge fan, she's doubtless watching this right now, she has an invite to come on my new podcast, which will debut soon, in addition to all the other things I'm doing. The daily three-hour radio show. uh, The daily one-hour television show. uh, This show. Writing on OutKick. I am going to be debuting a long-form podcast interview. uh, And there are going to be a lot of guests that you guys love. We're able to sit, talk, limited commercial breaks, long-form. And I think people are really going to like it. And so uh, we got a couple of those debuting soon. But Jamel Hill has an open invite. I want you to know this. I don't run and hide from people who disagree with me. People who disagree with me are certainly welcome on my radio show all the time. They are welcome on, uh, on uh, my podcast. Well, the truth of the matter is this. Most people who disagree with me are afraid to come on the show and or most people who disagree with me are so far down the flowchart of relevancy they're like, I don't see any benefit of having people who are nowhere near my level of, uh, of audience as a guest, right? Like, oh, somebody's got like 3,000 Twitter followers and they're like chirping me all the time. Whatever, dude. You're just like a barking dog that nobody's paying attention to. And there's lots of that now as the show grows in popularity and as my audience expands. There's lots of people who chirp at me all the time. Unless you're as famous as me, I typically don't respond. There's an interesting theory here that really needs to be embraced once you start to have a big audience. You every now and then can feud, but you need to be feuding up. So I'm only going to feud with people who are on my level or who I think are, uh, are significantly above me. And that's getting harder and harder to do. Uh, I'm not going to feud with some of the pipsqueaks. That's kind of the, the decision that I made when I started having a daily television show. I'm like, I don't have enough time to keep up with all these Twitter feuds. So uh, that's the truth. Uh, so uh, we are off and rolling here. we got a lot to get to, but I want to... I'll talk about Jamel a little bit later, but I want to invite her right off the top to come on the podcast. Raptors crush the Bucks. What's up with Drake? We're going to talk about Drake. The Blues, St. Louis Blues, congrats to the Blues on their trip to the Stanley Cup. Jawan Howard uh, being hired to Michigan according to multiple reports. Aaron Rodgers delivers an absolutely perfect analysis of Game of Thrones. It's the only time I've ever seen Aaron Rodgers say anything that's particularly interesting. Uh, And again, I'll talk about Jamel coming by and hanging out on the show. But first, let's start here. Who does Drake think he is? Who does Drake think he is that he can be on the sideline literally massaging the coach's shoulders during the game? Have you ever seen a famous person and there are lots of famous people on uh, the courtside seats in NBA arenas. Have you ever seen a famous person massage a head coach before? I mean, it was kind of funny but if I'm the head coach, I'm like, dude, How about you sit in your chair and watch the professionals actually do our job? You wear jerseys of every team under the sun. You are out there sporting whatever the flavor of the month is. That's why there's a thing called the Drake Curse. The Toronto Raptors are in the best shape they've ever been in the history of their franchise. Tied up 2-2 in a three-game playoff to go to the NBA Finals. I don't need you massaging my shoulders. It's a ridiculous move by Drake. I also don't need you reacting so ridiculously 
every single time something happens on the basketball court. I'm not sure we've ever seen anybody this side of Spike Lee end up on this situation on the show uh, the, the broadcast as much as he on he is on. You guys are telling me he was Jimmy and Degrassi in a wheelchair. I watched the Degrassi High thing. Wheels I remember back in the day. I think he was in the Degrassi High remakes. I'm an old school veteran of Degrassi uh, Junior High the Canadian series. Instead of talking to me about the birds and the bees and everything else my dad just gave me the Degrassi High tapes when I was 12 or 13 years old and told me to learn how to live my life based on how a bunch of Canadian uh, teenagers in a pop show were living their life. And you know what? That was a pretty awesome show. That Degrassi series uh, I might not like Rachel Bonetta very much and I might not like the country of Canada that much but I gotta say probably the best thing that's ever come out of Canada Degrassi High. That and maple syrup. Also moose. Uh, all right. Uh, so the Raptors destroyed the Bucks. I lost some money last night. Coming into this game the Bucks were 22-1 and in response to losses this season. That is better than any NBA team has ever been in the history of the entire franchise. In the history of the association. All right? And then they went out and got waxed. And I don't have very much to say about it. Right? I mean it was just an utter beatdown. There's no way to describe what went on other than to say that the Raptors were the infinitely better team. I bet like a lot of you you didn't even know who Norman was it Norman Powell? Norman Powell who's out there running around in the undershirt have you seen Norman Powell before? If you had asked me before who Norman Powell was I would have told you it was a 75 year old dude angry about immigration in upstate Michigan. Turns out Norman Powell is a dominant force for the Toronto Raptors in this series against the, uh, against the Milwaukee Bucks. I had no earthly idea who this guy was. He's out there running around. Remember when people used to wear the undershirts? I think he's like the last guy to wear an undershirt. He's out there running around in the undershirts Gatino Mobley style just draining jumpers from outside. Norman Powell. Never seen him. Never heard of him before. My dad's name is Norman and he's 75 years old. I didn't know that anybody was a Norman uh, in, in, in modern era. Maybe the name Norman's coming back. Maybe it's huge in the NBA submarkets. I have no idea. But the Raptors ran. Absolutely ran the uh, ran the Bucks off the court. And now we're in a three game playoff. And the stats are pretty straightforward on this. The team that wins game five in the NBA win, when they're tied up 2-2 wins 85% of all of the um, of all the series. So game five effectively is the deciding factor at this point in time. Whoever wins game five will advance and will be a member of the NBA's probable uh, finals where they will go up against the Golden State Warriors and lose. This is like arguing over who gets executed last. Uh, that's what's going on right now between the Raptors and the Bucks. A battle over who is the last one to get its head chopped off. I don't think there's any doubt. I don't have any uncertainty at all. Uh, I think that whoever wins whether it is the Raptors or the Bucks is going to be executed by the Golden State Warriors. So Warriors in five or six against either of these teams but in the meantime I'll be watching game five tomorrow and probably a lot of you will as well because there's nothing else on television in the world of sports to watch unless you're all in on a local baseball team and I'm not all in on a local baseball team right now. I want to give credit to the St. Louis Blues the St. Louis Blues have not been to the Stanley Cup final since 1970. I don't know how many people watching this right now are hockey fans or listening to this and I don't know how many of you specifically are St. Louis Blues fans but you guys deserve your moment in the sun. You were awful this year. One of the best turnaround stories we have ever seen and finally the San Jose Sharks who were protected in Game 7 against the Las Vegas Golden Knights when they got a bogus 5 minute major penalty who were protected in Game 7 against the Colorado Avalanche when they got a bogus offsides call to take off a tying goal and who were protected in Game 3 when they had a clear and evident hand pass that was overlooked that was allowed to be given a goal which allowed the Sharks to go up 2-1 and seemed like it might be massive in this series have now been eliminated 
The uh, St. Louis Blues win three straight. The last two they dominate. Go Blues. Crank up Gloria. I hope you guys take out the Boston Bruins because the city of Boston has won enough titles already. Also because I took the Blues at 6-1 to one after they won their first series uh, uh, before. Who'd you guys beat in the first round? I can't even remember. But I took you at 6-1 to one right after the first round series you won. And so I'd like for you guys to cash so that, uh, so that I can actually win a bet for a change. Alright, this is intriguing to me. Jawan Howard to Michigan. Uh, the new trend in college basketball because everything becomes a trend, right? Like in the NFL, the trend is what? If you are connected in any way to Sean McVay, you get a head coaching job in the NFL. If you are Sean McVay's masseuse, a little bit dangerous considering what happened with Robert Kraft. If you are Sean McVay's bus driver, if you are Sean McVay's former lawn boy, if you are in any way connected at all to Sean McVay, you get a head coaching job in the NFL. The new equivalent, the new hotness in college basketball is big-time star who went to your school that you think can recruit well. Everybody out there trying to catch up with Penny Hardaway. We haven't talked much about what Memphis has been capable of, but Penny Hardaway has right now the number one recruiting class in all of college basketball. He's got one of the top recruits, big guy who's going to play for him next year. And everybody's trying to find their version of Penny Hardaway. Who is the guy that you can go out and hire who will be able to win at an incredibly high level? Okay? Everybody now trying to copy Penny Hardaway. Doesn't mean he can coach at all. And the irony is Vandy tried to do this except they hired a guy who didn't even go to Vandy in Jerry Stackhouse. Doesn't mean that you're going to win championships because first of all there's only so many actual big time quality basketball players. So in general... I don't think this strategy is going to work but we will see Penny Hardaway is the new test. And the question will be is it possible to win at a high level? Everybody wants their own version of Penny Hardaway. Like everybody wants their own version in college football and Nick Saban. Everybody in the NFL wants their own version of Sean McVay. Right now in college basketball Penny Hardaway is the new hotness because you can turn around a program really quickly. The challenge is Patrick Ewing hasn't been that successful at Georgetown. Chris Mullen was not that successful at St. John's. By and large, these guys who come in and get jobs like this don't pan out because it's a hard job. And so as a result, I think it's unlikely there's going to be a lot of Penny Hardaways, but I don't think Jawan Howard gets this job if Penny Hardaway hadn't gotten his job and done as well as he did coaching last year. They were vastly improved down the stretch, uh, uh, Memphis was. And... Certainly everybody's looking at the recruiting job that Penny Hardaway is doing and everybody is out there trying to follow it. So by the way, I block some of these guys. There's a couple of guys who come in under different names every day and they obsessively uh, comment and Clay Kyle is here with his gun. And those of you who are longtime commenters know one of the favorite things I get to do on this show is I like to look over And if I see a name coming up that's saying something uninteresting over and over and over again, I wipe them out. Clay Kyle's got the gun. You're never going to be able to comment again without going in and having to create a new name. And what I love is owning somebody's brain so much that in the middle of the day they are so obsessed with my opinions that they are creating constantly new names and coming in again and again and again and getting axed there's probably a good chance that in the next three or four minutes there will be a name. There will be a name that shows up that is new and that will be somebody who's had to go and credit, uh, register a new Periscope account, right? Periscope should be paying me tons of money for the amount of new accounts that these guys are creating probably by themselves creating an entire new ecosystem of growth just by me. Uh, so, That is what's going on, I believe, with Jawan Howard to Michigan. I hope he succeeds because I like when Michigan basketball is good because my wife is more likely to sleep with me in March Madness if they're winning games. So I've got an interest. My wife's a Michigan grad. I would root for that in general. Somebody's out there saying, Penny was a successful high school and AAU coach. That's not actually uh, dispositive. There are lots of successful AAU and high school coaches. Most of the time, they aren't going to be very good in college. And now what's going to happen is sooner or later when you have talent, 
you have to prove that you can ma manipulate that talent and bring it to bear in a positive way. Because remember, Bryce Drew had talent at Vanderbilt, the most talented recruiting class ever, and he went 0-16 or 0-18 or whatever the heck it is now, and he got fired. That's how it happens. And yes, AAU coaches in general, they're more recruiters than they are coaches. Most AAU coaches are not exactly X's and O's wizards. So, I think it remains to be seen how Penny Hardaway is going to do now that he's got talent that's the equal of or better than almost anybody else. But that's clearly the guide mark that some of these programs are starting to follow, including uh, the uh, including Michigan with their move to go hire Jawan Howard. Uh, all right, Aaron Rodgers. Did you guys see Aaron Rodgers and how good his breakdown was of Game of Thrones? I mean, my breakdowns of Game of Thrones are extraordinary, obviously. But I also am not a one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. So my standard for how good I thought Aaron Rodgers was going to be is certainly not as high as he actually was. There we go. See, this guy just popped up. That's him. He just got blocked. Doesn't even get to comment. That's the guy who I just blocked. Went through the entire process of creating a new login. Was trying to come back in to make new comments. And I just wiped him out before he could even comment again. I mean, think about that when you think about how fast the trigger finger of Clay Kyle is. I can eliminate people before they are even able to speak. And that guy's world is blown now. He's going to have to go keep creating new accounts. And he's going to keep creating new accounts. And I'm going to keep driving up the total engagement numbers for Periscope. And they're going to be blown away. It's all going to be me single-handedly making a guy create a million different accounts. Uh, so, um, Aaron Rodgers' Game of Thrones take was phenomenal. I am blown away by how much more interesting Aaron Rodgers was talking about Game of Thrones than he ever has been in his entire career talking about football. I almost think that you should just stop asking any football questions of any athlete ever, any basketball questions. If you noticed on my show, I almost never, almost never have athletes or coaches on my radio show. Why? Because most of the time they're boring. They say the same thing over and over and over again. I'd rather go take calls and our call system doesn't even work half the time. So Aaron Rodgers, he was a guest star in one of the episodes in season eight and then he ripped it. He destroyed the show. If you haven't seen it, I tweeted out. It was fantastic. I think Aaron Rodgers talking about Game of Thrones is the only interesting thing Aaron Rodgers has ever said in his career other than when he said relax, which is the only other quote I can even remember that Aaron Rodgers has ever given from the locker room. Finally, I got to go get ready for TV. Be on Lock It In, 4.30 Eastern, 3.30 Central, 2.30 Mountain, 1.30 Pacific. But I want to say this again. Jamel Hill, you're hanging out. You blocked me on Twitter. I don't know why. We used to be friends. And then you went and blocked me on Twitter. Now you're sliding all in secretively into our OutKick shows, watching them quietly, trying not to draw attention to yourself. But I caught you. You're busted. You're welcome to come on the podcast. I extend an olive branch to you. We don't agree on a lot of issues. For instance, I don't think Donald Trump's a white supremacist. And I don't think you did a very good job when you got a huge promotion and got the opportunity to take over the 6 p.m. Sports Center Eastern Time. I think you blew it there. And I think you had an opportunity to be the next Oprah and instead you gave it all up so you could be the next Al Sharpton. I think that's an incredibly interesting career decision that you made. But you may disagree. You may think I'm full of it. You may think I'm a liar and you don't trust me and you think I'm a fraudulent, totally untrustworthy individual. You're welcome to come on the podcast and call me out for it. I'm a big boy. I can take people saying negative things about me. Open forum. You're invited. We know you like to come out and watch OutKick. You're invited to come on and watch the show uh, and hang out on the new podcast. Encourage you guys to go subscribe for the new podcast. This goes up as an audio file on this podcast, but also I encourage you guys to go download uh, and subscribe to Outkick the Coverage because we are going to have all these brand new podcasts going up, long form interviews. I think you guys are going to love them. I'm not sure when the first episodes are going to start to populate on the feed, but they will be there soon. And I look forward to everybody being able to get hooked up there. It's going to be fabulous. You will love it. 
My name is Clay Travis. Yes, it is on iTunes. They will all be on iTunes. If you are not subscribed right now for Outkick the Coverage, the minute that they come live, you will get the first episode. It's going to be long-form interviews, very limited uh, very limited uh, commercial breaks. It's going to be with sports figures, politicians, media, business executives, people that I want to talk to. The concept of the show in general is, uh, is wins and losses. Wins and losses... Like, I feel as if we spend a lot of time talking about wins in this country. I want to talk to everybody about their biggest wins and their biggest losses. In sports, in media, in politics, in business, all of it. I encourage all of you, go download it. I'll kick the coverage. I think you guys will love it. Kisses, DBAP unless you need to be S- unless you need to SBAP. This has been Outkick the Show. I hope all of you have fantastic long weekends in the event I don't talk to you again before Memorial Day. I'm headed to the beach. Pray for me. It's about 93 degrees down there. This has been Outkick the Show. DBAP, unless you need to SBAP. I'll see you guys. Bye. Ooh, I got all sorts of new tools here. I can't figure out. Can't figure out how this works. There we go. All right, love you. See you guys. Bye, Facebook.